let's talk about performance. So performance um, is really all about units and uh, using those units and some algebra to find the answer to these word problems that we're given. So we've got a few things like um, clock cycles. That's probably the, the fundamental uh, thing that we talk about in performance is clock cycles. Right, and what are clock cycles? Well, we just get this little thing out here. We can show that um, you know, we've got our sections. All right, that's the ALU. Here's our little diagram. So this is the instruction fetch, instruction decode, ALU, memory, okay, and write back. And in the single cycle, uh, going from this stage all the way to this stage is one clock cycle. Cycle, right? Now we can take this, right? We can take the same diagram, just copy and paste, right? I can just move it down here. And we have, we also have our pipeline, right? Pipe, pipeline. And each one of these is a clock cycle, right? So this would be clock cycle one, we'll abbreviate. Clock cycle two, clock cycle three, clock cycle four, and clock cycle five. Okay, so it depends on which type of architecture you're using, single cycle or the pipeline architecture. Okay, because this is going to change. Now, in um, we have some other things here. I'll just I'm just going to uh, this and just put this on a different thing here. Now, we have this other one. We have another one here. Um, we have clock cycle time, right? Now, what is clock cycle time? Well, clock cycle time is the time that it takes, right, to go from, uh, in, in this case, in the single cycle case, it's the time that it takes to go from here to here, right? That's the clock cycle time. So it would take a certain amount of seconds to execute this section and a certain amount of seconds to execute this section and so on and so forth. And you would add those up in this case. And then you have your clock cycle time. Now for the pipeline, this is the clock cycle time, is one cycle. And typically they're fixed. It's fixed. So you would choose whichever one of these is the takes the longest, right? So typically memory is the one that takes the longest. And that would be our clock cycle time for each of these. They all have the same clock cycle time, or the time to execute, how long it takes to execute that cycle. So let's do a quick example. Now let's say that you're given uh, you know, 250 nanoseconds to execute uh, that memory section, right? to access memory. So if we look at this, uh, we can say that this is also 250 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, seconds. I'm trying to write small here enough. So seconds, right? So it's the same thing. That's the nano part of this, right? But the, the, the main thing here is that we wanted to get seconds out of here, right? We want to get seconds so we can see it's time, right? Time. Now also, this is clock cycle time. So one thing that we forget to show is that this is clock cycles. I'm just going to abbreviate clock cycles since we use it so much. This is clocks, uh, clock cycles, right? Per clock cycle, right? Per one clock cycle, if you want, right? If you'd like to see that number there. So one clock cycle, okay? Seconds per clock cycle. And so we can say, we're just gonna show what the units are, just the units. And this is seconds per clock cycle, okay? There's our units. We've got another one clock rate, and I can't spell correctly here, clock rate. All right, so what's clock rate? Well, clock rate is um, cycles, ends up being cycles per second. All right, how many cycles are we uh, executing per second? How many cycles are being performed per second? Right, so if we do a little example, usually clock rate is given to us in um, uh, gigahertz, 
right? It's what we usually see, four gigahertz, right? And if we were given that, then we can uh, kind of use our scientific notation here to get the units that we want. And this is a positive nine here. So that's 10 to the nine, that's gigahertz, right? And as we just said, uh, hertz is cycles per second. So this actually becomes four times 10 to the nine clock cycles per second. Okay, now if you see something here, we have this is a pretty interesting thing to see, is that we have uh, clock cycles per second, whereas clock cycle time is just the inverse. Okay, so you take one over this, and one over four times 10, 10 to the nine would be uh, 0.25 right? Uh, 0.25 times 10 to the minus 9, so we end up with nanoseconds. Nanoseconds here, right? You can kind of do the math there, just one over. Uh, then we have another uh, one of the clock or cycles, and that is uh, cycles per instruction, right? And we'll say, okay, we'll just abbreviate instruction there. And clock cycles per instruction, as you know, is right C oops what am I doing CPI right, that's typically how we're, we're we abbreviate it and it's literally just what that is it's clock cycles per instruction okay how many clock cycles does it take <coughs> to execute an entire instruction and in the case of a single cycle it takes one cycle per instruction our CPI is one in the single cycle case. But in pipeline, it depends on how many cycles that instruction takes. So uh, a load word takes five cycles, right? It takes five cycles to execute that instruction, whereas an R type will only take four because it doesn't need to access memory. So another interesting or important one is CPU, or you could also say uh, execution time, right? And we can find this by uh, combining uh, our equations from above. So there's a few equations that we can use. Um, the simplest one is clock cycles times uh, the clock cycle time. We'll just say time, right? Clock cycle time. Multiply. Maybe we should just do, since we didn't... Uh, We'll say clock cycle time, just to kind of differentiate those two there, clock cycle time. And as we know, uh, the, clock the clock cycle time is the same as one over the clock rate, right? So we can find this, we can find execution time or CPU time by doing the same, uh, actually let's do it like this, by doing the same a calculation kind of like this over the clock rates. Sorry, it's difficult to write with a mouse. Okay, so clock rate. So how else can we do this? Well, let's say we're given a certain number of, of instructions, right? We have an instructions, right? This is the, uh, this is a count here. Okay, actually I can just write count. Instruction count. All right, and if we multiply that by, uh, what is it, our CPI. CPI, as you can see what happens when we multiply instructions with CPI, we're left with our clock cycles, right? And if we're left with clock cycles, then all we need to do is multiply by clock cycle time, clock cycle time, and we're good, right? And as we know, we'll just write this out again. We'll say instruction count times CPI, right? Divided by the clock rate again. Okay, so it's all about uh, 
Uh, that's definitely not how you spell that. Clock rate. Okay, and there we go. It's just a, it's just a, a combination of, of algebra and uh, some of these equations here. Okay, so now let's let's do um, one example here, and we're we're going to be asked for a couple of different uh, things. So if we just do, let's, let's close this one out. Now let's say that um, we're given four gigahertz as our um, clock rate. And we say that 25% of our things are load word. And um, what is it? 10% are store words. 10% of our instructions are store words. 11% are branches, right? We'll just say branch equal, that's fine. Um, we'll say 2% of those instructions are jumps, right? Jump instructions. And the other, what is that, 52? 52% of our instructions are R-type instructions. R-type, oops, R-type instructions. Let's move this over here. Now we know that, I'll just draw this little thing here again, this, this, this is our ALU, it's just a square, but just our ALU, it's just a diagram here. This is our instruction fetch, instruction decode, ALU, Q, uh, memory, and write back. Now how many instruction, or how many cycles does this take? Well, a load word takes five cycles, right? One, two, three, four, five. In this case, we're, and we're talking about pipeline here. Okay, store word only takes four because it doesn't need to write back. Branch equal takes three because at the ALU is its last little, um, it's the last piece of that's that its calculation there. A jump only takes one cycle because it's found out right here and it goes up and you know how that goes. And then our R type only takes four because we're not accessing memory. Now let's say we're asked for the effective CPI, and this just means uh, the C. What is our actual CPI when we when we add up this for this uh, for this set of instructions for this program? Well, we just take 0.25, right? 25 percent times how many cycles, right? Because remember, this is how many cycles per instruction. Is are, are we executing right? How many instruction cycles per instruction are happening, right? And we can just add that to our uh, point one, uh, one zero. We'll say times four. We can add that to point one one times three plus point zero two times one plus point five two. Whoops, point five two times four. Right, and all this comes out to be 4.08, uh, that's a, not an 8, that's an 8. Uh, okay, let's just fix that. 8, let's fix that too. 8, there we go. Clock cycles per instruction. Okay, CPI. Now we're also asked for millions of instructions per second. That's MIPS, millions of instructions per second. Now, um, let's write this here. We want millions of instructions per second. So let's put that at the end, because that's what we want. We want um, millions of instructions. Wow, that's terrible. Instructions per second. Now, how do we start? Well, we know gigahertz. We have um, clock cycles per second. We know that. And we have clock cycles per instruction. So how do we get instructions per second? Well, we need the reciprocal of this. So that means that we need to take this and divide by this because then we get the reciprocal of this. right? So we have 
um, clock cycles per second divided by, we'll just put these in parentheses, clock cycles per instruction, okay, which gives us clock cycles per second times, right, instructions per clock cycle. Alright, sorry, it's a little bit of a bad drawing, but you see what we're doing, and clock cycles divide out, and we're left with instructions per second. Now, we want millions of instructions per second, so hopefully our, uh, our calculation will end up with some huge number, and sure enough, uh, we get a gigantic uh, number, right? Because what we're actually getting is we're going to say 4 times 10 to the 9, right? Divided by, right? Okay, that's this, that's this section here. I'm just going to point to it. Right? 4 times 10 to the 9 divided by 4.08, right? And that was this here our effective CPI, and we end up with uh, nine, 980, right, whatever, 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 instructions per second. And actually, let's just, let's just do it right. 980 million, right, and actually if we just kind of make this uh, approximately 980 million instructions, right, per second. Okay, so let's take one more look at uh, some of our base units here. All right, we've got seconds per clock cycles, we've got clock cycles per second, we've got clock cycles per instruction, and so on. So study these, um, and these should help you out a lot with uh, performance equations.